Hello everybody and welcome to Living with the Ancients. Uh, we're here today with our dear friend, we're going to call him Faith, because every time I receive an animal, uh, I feel like it's a prayer answered, you know, a prayer for good nourishment and uh, a wonderful experience of just being in nature. So what we're going to do today is we're going to skin them and butcher them, and then uh, we're going to go to processing the meat and all that stuff later. So the first step is basically cut around the neck, the insides of the legs, top and bottom, or front and back I should say, and then down the tail. And then what we'll essentially do is peel the skin off and use as little of the knife uh, as possible to ensure that we get a nice clean hide. If we can avoid score marks, that's great. You know, it does happen, but ideally we don't have any, so we have a nice uh, hide to work with um, for our buckskin process. So, I hope you enjoy uh, this, and, um, you know, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> All right, here we go, baby. Are we ready? Yeah, man, we're ready. Here we go. So this is the first step, going around the neck. Perfect. Then the insides of the legs here. So we're going to start right here, right down the middle. Perfect. There. Then once we get that, now we're going to go from here all the way down the inside of this leg, the inside of that leg, and then <coughs> the other than the rear legs. Good. So basically, we're gonna get right around here, right around this uh, joint. Okay, once we get this cut around, then we just go straight up. through the thinnest part and then right up into here perfect it's definitely a process uh, skinning an animal I first did it when I was about eight out here in this very place with my dad and um, you know it's it's a wonderful thing to use every bit of the animal. So in this process, we're going to show you, you know, how to use the hide, how to use the the toes, the bones, um, every bit of the deer. Um, they are our neighbors, and I love I love working with them and living with them. So this is my way of uh, just saying thanks a lot for all the gifts that you give, and I'm very thankful for all my teachers who've shown me. Uh, the various ways to utilize the resources here in this fine, fine creature. <laughs> when you do this, you want to make sure you have a super sharp knife. This happens to be the Tom Brown Jr. Scout Knife. It's an amazing tool. You can do everything from skin a deer flesh a hide to carve a bow with this little bugger right here so I'm thankful for Tom all of his teachings and his tools and with this you know as with anything it's good just to take your time um, be very careful and enjoy yourself so uh, also Ideal to have gloves on or some kind of protection if you're afraid of um, bloodborne pathogens, which you know is definitely a concern. Um, I know I've done this a long time with bare hands, but so I guess maybe I'm just being foolish. <laughs> um, but that's your choice. Alright, so we have the bottom, the front legs here, 
are pretty much free. Now we're gonna go to the top, do the same thing and hit the tail and then just peel it down the back. Uh, we're gonna go straight up the middle and around just like the just like the front legs. However, we're gonna have to be really careful not to cut this uh, Achilles tendon here um, because that's what's helping to hang the creature. So we wanna be real careful when we cut around that, okay? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to get the tail. So we're going to try to split the tail right down the middle as best we can and peel it off very slowly. It's very easy to break the tail. So you're going to be extra careful and diligent about uh, how you use your knife. There, sweet. <laughs> All right, not bad. Very good. There, so we got it. We actually got it intact, so that's a good thing. When you get fisting, you basically get your hand in between the hide and the body of the deer. You basically, just try to manipulate it. Oh, in this case, it's going to peel nice and easy. Beautiful. Look at that. Okay. There he is. All right. So, we got the height off. And now, we're going to start the butchering process. So we've got the hide off, now it's time to start butchering. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these nice bits of fat off, set them aside and we're going to save them for later. We're going to render them and uh, make all kinds of good stuff with that fat. You can cook with it, you can make lotions, oils, salves. Um, you can uh, make candles with it, all kinds of good stuff. Use it to uh, preserve your bow staves and arrows. Um, I've used it for waterproofing. Um, you name it, it's very useful. It's edible and it's not toxic one bit. So we love it, we love the fat, and so we're going to save every ounce that we can. Alright, so that's the first step. So once we get the fat off, then uh, we'll take off the front shoulders and <clears throat> then we'll remove the, the loins, the inner tenderloins, the outer tenderloins or the back straps, and then we'll get to the hind quarters. Um, that'll be the finale. All right. So sometimes you can get a nice bite into the fat and get your fingers in between the fat and the muscle and peel it away just like this. This is awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this I'm just going to open this right up here. Like this. Okay. Then you can see there's a pretty clear distinction between the body and the shoulder. And so, there she is right there. There's one front shoulder. Okay.
So we got one side here pretty much clear. Now we're going to get the other side. Going to clear away this connective tissue and expose this outer tenderloin or the back strap, whatever you want to call it. So to remove this loin here, we're going to cut across the top and then straight down the spine. Okay. So you can see we're getting down into the neck there, so we're just going to cut it right off and then we'll trim it up later. But there's a beautiful, beautiful nice steak there and a very useful silver skin here actually. This is some of the best sinews to use because they have really, really long, uh, long fibers. So they're great for making cordage and all kinds of uh, useful things, string, bow strings, uh, sewing projects, you name it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to remove the sinew now, and we're going to basically start here at the top, get this all free, and then <clears throat> just work our knife down and we'll get a nice long piece of sinew and a nice piece of clean steak. And we're going to put our knife right in there. We're going to get a good grip on the sinew. Then we're just going to slowly start to draw that through. And you can see there's a real nice clean separation there. Once you start and you get this nice um, clean separation. You just continue to follow that down. Just hold the sinew and just gently wiggle the knife. All the way down. And voila. Oh, I got a little piece here. Perfect. Look at that. It's almost totally clean. So we have our nice, nice bit of tenderloin here. We can clean up all the stuff in a bit and as far as the sinew goes you want to scrape this clean of any meat before you put it away to dry try to get it absolutely as clean as possible if you don't get it totally cleaned up um, what will happen is the bugs will get to it and they'll clean it up for you <laughs> After which you might want to wash your sinew before you um, use it for a project. Because the best way to soften sinew is actually to put it in your mouth and let the enzymes kind of help break it down. It helps it stick a little better to itself. So here they are right up in here. Like that. Cut along the inside. You can see the spine right here, so I'm just going to cut along the inside of the spine um, there and then along the spine along the, in the center.
we go. There, she came right out. Beautiful little loin right there. We have all our neck right here, perfect, ready for a roast already. Just got to roll it up. And then for your corn venison, basically you brine it for a, a few days and then <coughs> boil it, then add your veggies and all that stuff and simmer it for a few hours and now it just melts. So the neck is a fine cut of meat. I'm thankful for every bit. Okay, so now we're going to start breaking down uh, the front shoulders here. So what you can, what you want to do is first remove uh, from the knee down the hock. Um, the easiest way that I found is to sever these tendons here that hold the lower leg in place. And so basically, cut all the way around that joint. Make sure you got all the connective tissue removed there. And then what you can do is take that knee and then bend it over the table and comes right off. There we go. Okay, so there's one. All right. So then we can save these hawk skins to make useful things and the toes as well. So we're just slowly removing this meat here, coming out, peeling that away from the bone and the shoulder blade here. Okay, so just going to follow that all the way down. We'll definitely save all of this for rendering. Uh, make sure you cut that. There might be a gland in there. Yeah, you can see that, that little gland. So make sure you remove that from the fat before uh, you cook it, okay? Before you render it. Cool. So there you have the lower leg. There's some nice little stakes in there. There's a lot of connective tissue too and some fat to clean up. Um, but basically, um, you can make a really good roast with this. Uh, if you marinate this, you can really you know, cut this up and marinate it. Uh, you can really tenderize all of this connective tissue and it becomes a really nice texture. Um, so a little cleaning up, um, it'll be ready for a roast or for a marinade or you can grind this. It's really great ground meat as well. Okay, so we're almost finished now. All we have left are the hind quarters. So we're gonna separate them from the carcass and then we're gonna split them out, um, separate the steaks and the other stuff. So for this, you wanna start here, come right in along the side of the sacrum. So once you separate the, the hip, the ball of the hip joint there from the socket, the rest of it comes off pretty easy. 
So you just follow along the edge of the sacrum here and just slowly take it right out. Nice. So now it's time to remove uh, the lower leg from the hind quarter here. So what you want to do first is, well basically skin away this, uh, the hawk skin here from the lower leg. Then you're going to cut this tendon here first. Then what you want to do is just like the front leg, cut all that connective tissue away from around the bone. and from around that joint. pretty much free. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just break it right over this corner. Nice and easy. And just get the rest of that uh, connective tissue off. We'll save this, we'll save the hawk skins for making a bag or something fun and then we'll use this lower leg <clears throat> to make a bone knife um, or some kind of tool. That's very useful. So ultimately we'll show you all the different parts of the deer and how to make something very useful with them. Okay. All right. So we finished cleaning up the sinew, we got all the meat off it, this nice shiny, shiny piece here. Makes some of the best thread, super strong, um, has a greater, greater tensile strength per pound or by weight um, than steel does, so it's incredibly strong stuff. So what I need to do now is basically just put it up somewhere where it will dry and uh, put it up away from, you know, where any dogs or your pets could get it and chew on it. because. I'm sure they would love to make this a chewy. <laughs> so these are going to be very useful. Save your sinews, okay? especially the backstrap sinew. You can also save this other sinew here in the lower leg um, along the shank here. And what you'll, you'll do is basically dry this and then pound it and then separate the fibers. So these sinews are also um, very useful. Okay. So we've got our sinew and everything all set. Now we're going to get into our hind quarter here. So you have a few different good sized stakes in here. You have the sirloin tip, which is like the football shaped stake. Um, you have top round, bottom round, and eye of round. And then you've got this lower shank here. Um, so what you do is just kind of follow the muscles and the way the muscle groups are kind of knitted together. There'll be little seams in between. And if you can just follow those, it makes the whole job of cutting up the deer easier and cutting up this um, lower leg. So you can see here is the front, rear, so this is the eye of round. <clears throat> and if we just cut along the back side of it, there's a natural seam there. And it opens it right up. Just like that. Okay, so we got that one. And then you can see where the next stake is, right underneath there, the bottom round. So 
So there's a nice one. There we go, boom. So the top part of the leg there, the hind quarters are all cut up nice and quick. So just by following those muscles, um, they'll kind of tell you where to go. So for now, we're just going to clean up silver skin and all that stuff, um, depending on how you want to cook it. If you want to eat the steak, maybe you want to make it a little more clean. If you want to make a roast, maybe you want to include all that wonderful connective tissue because it gets all like gooey and mm, so delicious. So what we're going to do too, I think, is I'm going to make a little roast here with this lower leg. So I'm going to remove that. Easy peasy. So basically we can roast this whole lower leg, the bone right in there. Um, or, you know, this makes great stew meat. Chop it up real fine. Or if you want to stir fry it, just make sure you marinate it for a while. That'll help everything get tender. Um, so that way you can eat every part of the animal. Also, what I usually do with the bones is uh, I usually chop them up into small pieces with a hatchet. Make sure if you do it, you wear safety glasses because the bone pieces will fly here and there. And then I put them into a big pot and boil them for a few days. Um, add some vinegar. Last day I add a bunch of veggies. Sometimes I'll put in medicinal mushrooms like chaga or um, Ganoderma suge, you know, the local um, reishi mushroom. And, you know, maybe some others, polypores or whatever, to just add even that much more nutrient and like healthy stuff to it. And they say that bone broth and raw milk are the two best sources of calcium on the planet. So, keeps you in good teeth. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, when I'm feeling sick, if, or if I feel like I'm about to get sick, I take some of that bone broth, drink it down, and uh, it's very rare that I do end up getting sick. So, so there's a lot of medicine here in these animals um, if you know how to extract the nutrients and um, utilize that. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the process. Um, and, you know, this is just one way to do it. Um, I'm always looking to learn more, so I'm open to lots of suggestions and all that stuff on ways to improve and make it more fluid, easy, and, um, you know, and clear. So thank you so much, everybody. Hope you enjoy. Have a good one. Mmm.